Multiple areas with the potential to develop in the tropics. Meanwhile, a major pattern change on the way that will usher in fall weather for many. Welcome in, folks. Great to see you on this wonderful, beautiful, and hopefully happy Friday, August 22nd now. And uh, we've been talking about the tropics for a while now. We're going to continue to have to do so. Uh, but I do think we are seeing some changes in the tropics, also some changes back home that is really going to open up the floodgates for some fall-like air just in time for college football, that uh, fall Starbucks menu, and uh, any other maybe uh, early season fall activities you might have planned. Uh, you're going to be in luck by the time we get on into next week. So we're going to break all of that down for you in today's video. Now, if you're new to the channel and you haven't already, uh, go ahead and like the video, subscribe, and hit the bell for the latest notifications. And it's always a pleasure to have you here today, and it uh, really does mean the world to me. And doing all of those things are free, so why not do it? It helps you out. It helps me out. And, uh, you know, we can all just uh, help each other out here on a Friday. All right, well, that's it. let's dive right on into it today. We're going to keep things short, simple, and sweet and start here with our satellite imagery in the tropics. Now, uh, the first big swirl you see here up in the north, this is actually uh, Hurricane Aaron or uh, what is left of Hurricane Aaron. Now really starting to become more of an extra or post-tropical system as it starts to take on more of those mid-latitude cyclone features. In fact, you can kind of already see it's beginning to gain fronts here uh, out uh, along the storm. So uh, still a behemoth of a system, still a very low pressure, still a very strong storm, but winds starting to come back down to category one strength, which is definitely good news. Outside of there, we've got a new area to watch, uh, or I say new area, area we're continuing to watch here just north of the Leeward Islands, another one out into the main development region, and you can see even another little wave here well out on the side. So the Atlantic wave train is uh, still very much alive, and because of that, the National Hurricane Center are uh, monitoring all of these areas. So obviously Aaron still expected to curve on up out to sea. In fact, likely not even making an impact here into Ireland or the UK. And uh, eventually here will be south of Iceland by the time we get on into uh, about uh, four or five days from now. So Aaron's going to start to book it. Uh, will no longer be a problem here pretty soon as it gets caught up in the mid-latitude westerlies and brought well up into the North Atlantic and uh, become being very much no longer tropical as it runs out of those warm waters to work with. Uh, down south, though, two other areas to watch. We've got a red area and an orange area. The red area uh, almost guaranteed to develop, the National Hurricane Center saying here, uh, out into really the middle of the Atlantic. But getting close to Bermuda, you can see that here. Uh, there, This would be by the time we get later into this weekend and into early next week. Behind it, that other area that uh, for some reason the National Hurricane Center just would not name. I mean, I'll tell you, this thing was a tropical cyclone. I don't know why they did not give it the name for NAND. Um, I'm not going to pretend to know why either, but they didn't either way. And uh, they're leaving it as an area of interest. Um, but uh, that also running the chance to develop as it heads towards the southern islands, including Barbados, uh, St. Vincent and the Grenadines and uh, Grenada and even towards St. Lucia and Martinique. Uh, by the time we get a little bit on down the road, could potentially try to develop before then. So we're going to need to talk about both of those. And speaking of that, let's go right back to satellite and dive in just on the main development region. Take a look at that Atlantic wave train and get an idea of uh, maybe how it's going and if these systems have a good shot to develop. Here's the good news right off the bat. Dry air is really trying its hardest to help us out here. We've got big plumes of Sahara dust rolling off and really kind of wrapping around all of these systems. However, that is not the only thing that matters for tropical development. These systems are starting to work into warmer sea surface temperatures and also uh, at least one of them going to be working into an environment of much lower shear and potentially both of them depending on you know how far down the road they can survive. But this is good news. Dry air is starting to take over and I'll be honest, I think the window of development is starting to close here in the Atlantic for at least a time period. Now obviously we've got plenty of hurricane season to go, uh, but I think the last week of August uh, and into maybe even that first week of September, things look a lot more quiet out here, uh, even if this Atlantic wave train looks impressive now. And, uh, you know, we can show you again, if we go back to our infrared and uh, we'll update the plot here so it loads properly, um, you know, these areas are definitely on their own. They're not attached to, uh, you know, each other. So they're, they're working with their own environment. They're going to have a good shot to develop into something. And uh, that's definitely worth noting. Now, uh, the area up to the north, that's the one that has the high chance of developing. The one behind it running a medium percent chance. And finally, some of that dry air eating away at it. I mean, this thing looked really impressive yesterday. And like I said, it was definitely for NAND. I think in the postseason analysis, the NHC will go back and add uh, a name to this for, you know, historical sake. But um, either way, they didn't. Whatever is what it is. Um, but uh, definitely weaker today, no matter what. And probably even back open or back to open wave status 
guys, potentially. Behind it, uh, you notice this next one already getting eaten out by that dry air a little bit, and I think that's going to be the theme for the next week or so is dry air really keeps things a lot more quiet out here. But before we get there, these two systems here on the left are gonna have the chance to develop, and because of that, they are invests or areas of investigation. So let's go ahead and take a look at some model data on them and try to figure out where they're going and how strong they could get. Let's start with that northern system. This is the one that NHC has at a 90% chance of developing into Fernand, so getting that next name storm. And uh, model guidance, you know, pretty clustered together. It's not that difficult of a forecast here. We've got a big high pressure out here, and then uh, we're going to have a big trough in the east. So this thing's going to get wrapped up around the high and uh, almost like a slingshot thrown up into the North Atlantic. We'll need to watch it, though, because notice right here, this little circle is Bermuda, and all the members here are, you know, to the east of the island, but too close for comfort, and any little shifts uh, could mean, you know, big changes in the forecast there. We saw what happened with Aaron. That tr uh, trended significantly further west without time, so if this one did the same, although, you know, only a couple days away from being near Bermuda... Uh, we would uh, potentially have some problems there on the island. Also, intensity-wise with this one, something we need to watch. Now, I don't think this is going to get up into a major hurricane or anything, but almost all of our models do get this into tropical storm status here, uh, some of them even flirting with a Category 1 hurricane. I think that's a pretty safe forecast here. It's tropical storm upwards of maybe a weak hurricane could even be the potential here with this one. So we'll watch it and continue to monitor it and the track obviously being important. And we'll take a look at model data here on it next. But uh, the other area, this one, uh, look at how far south this is. I mean, this is at such a low latitude. This one could be scraping the northern coastline of Venezuela by the time we get into the start of this week. So, I mean, this one is definitely a low rider. However, you know, just because it's going to ride low doesn't mean that it'll bring big impacts. And we'll show you why as we switch on over now and take a look at some model guidance. The wind shear forecast is going to be kind of hit or miss for both of these storms. This is what it looks like out there right now. And uh, remember, this is way up in the atmosphere. This is those uh, upper level winds. And uh, this is what we talk about often whenever we look for some sort of divergence aloft that may help a storm intensify at the surface. Had that a lot with Aaron. And uh, we'll now need to try to sniff out to see if we'll get the same thing with these next two potential storms. Now, the one to the north, the one that, uh, again, has the high likelihood of development already getting under a more favorable upper level environment. The one behind it, different story. We uh, the easterlies here are winds blowing from the east uh, and uh, across the main development region. The trade winds absolutely ripping right now across this region and, uh, you know, kind of tearing apart anything that gets into it. So uh, I made this analogy yesterday and I thought it was kind of funny. But the storm on the north here, uh, it's like an action movie whenever you see the main character running out of a building that's like exploding behind them. Uh, that's what this one's doing. It's getting out of here before the atmosphere becomes almost unusable uh, for at least a little while uh, out here in the main development region region or the MDR. Now, the one behind it, though, has already proven models wrong a little bit. It's held on uh, better than many models have expected, so we'll see what happens. By the time we get into this weekend, here's Sunday. The system to the north now developed by this time on the GFS, uh, a weak tropical storm approaching Bermuda's uh, eastern side there and getting some upper level support and starting to continue to strengthen a little bit, and uh, you can see that happening. Meanwhile, you know, winds become a little more calm into the Caribbean at this point. This would be by next Tuesday into Wednesday. They become a little bit more calm into the MDR. And at this point, if the system that's still out there is still alive in any way, uh, it could try to reorganize a bit here into the Caribbean. I do think that has the potential to do so. Um, so still monitoring this for Central America uh, and, uh, you know, anywhere even further north, you never know. It's what, uh, way down the road. But especially for Central America and the islands here, we'll need to see if this can get its act back together. I will say if we look at humidity values on some of our models, they do try to uh, get this a little bit more, you know, into a favorable environment. So here's right now, uh, again, a lot of dry air in the MDR. Here's that northern system. Here's the southern one, especially the southern one getting choked out on all sides and uh, going to really be in a very tough environment for development over the next couple of days. Although, like I said, has already outdone models a bit. Uh, you keep it going, though, and uh, right around this time frame. Here we go. This is this coming Wednesday. At this point, the northern system, you know, still probably in that tropical storm to very weak hurricane status, skirting by Bermuda, already passing Bermuda by this point. Uh, but to the south, the Caribbean becoming more moist and wind shear relaxing a little bit. So we'll watch that for the middle of next week. Maybe this system uh, can hold on long enough. It has a shot to develop into something. And in fact, the GFS does get a little swirl of energy in there uh, in Central America, not a named storm, but at least, you know, at the very uh, minimum flooding rains here uh, into these countries, Nicaragua, Honduras, kind of surrounding areas by the time we get about a week or so from now. So we'll monitor that. We'll see what happens. 
Let's switch on over and take a look at just a little bit more hurricane model data, and then we'll talk about that major pattern change on the way for the lower 48. These are the ensembles for the next 10 days, folks. And uh, yeah, bone dry outside of that one area that's likely to develop. Uh, again, we're pretty confident that this next region is going to become something. The European models keep this even further away from Bermuda, at least the ensemble members. So that's good. Um, you can see they're well offshore Bermuda and the storm probably going to be pretty small in size anyway. So this would be almost a nothing burger for the island. So we'll hope for that. The southern area, very few members get something going. You know, you've got one or two stray members that try to get it into something. The uh, GFS ensembles, you know, pretty similar. Now, um, at least for the southern area, really almost the same as European. Not very excited. We'll see if that plays out. Uh, like I've mentioned, that wave really about to get shredded apart, likely by some dry air and wind shear. Then we'll watch the Caribbean by next week. Maybe if the energy is still there, could try to form into something. Uh, the GFS ensembles a lot further west here with uh, what would be Fernand and having a lot of members bring it right over Bermuda. You know, we'll see. Most members keeping it, though, in that tropical storm to maybe hurricane status. Uh, you know, a week one category one would be the most likely uh, rating if this even does get to a hurricane. Uh, so, you know, not to say it's nothing because any sort of tropical system or hurricane would be uh, a, a weather maker for Bermuda, but uh, an island that's built for it and has seen much worse than uh, a weak tropical storm. They probably call that a Tuesday in August out there. So uh, we'll uh, we'll keep you updated on the tropics throughout the coming weeks. Like I said, I think we're going to get in a bit of a lull here through the end of the month and we'll start talking about what's happening back home a bit more and uh, trying to figure out when uh, the tropics will come back to life. But Definitely not seeing any threats to the mainland United States over the next 10 days. In fact, I would probably say, you know, maybe a little bit longer than that. I will mention with some of these cold fronts working through, bringing that fall air, that does sometimes lead to uh, the chance for some homegrown development that can sneak up on us. So we'll watch that. But as for the main development region, looking pretty quiet after we get through these next two waves. Get your candy corn ready because lodge she coming and by she I mean a big old fall air mass and uh, this could be one that lasts for a while folks we could get multiple rounds of this nicer air and I think it'll really be a uh, welcome sight for many I think by the time we get to the end of August just about all of us are, are pretty done with the summertime and are looking forward to some fall like weather now uh, some folks might not be excited that that means we're closer to winter me personally I love a good snow so we'll hope that we've got plenty to talk about uh, this winter but before we get there uh, yeah let's enjoy Enjoy some of this nice fall air today uh, not a lot of rain out there right now we've got some rain up in the midwest which i mean boy oh boy what a wet summer it's been up here and uh luckily some drier air on the way but uh we do have again some scattered rain up there even some scattered rain into the southeast into the carolinas and uh, florida and into the gulf region as well as we've got that uh, offshore flow this morning by this afternoon it'll be onshore and once again more thunderstorm activity gonna likely go ahead and fire on up this is what's causing it. The big old blueberry of 25 or the big blueberry of August 2025. How about that? Uh, and there could be multiple blueberries. We could be blueberry picking by the end of this month. Here we go. We've got this area of troughing, which again is just a pocket of colder air uh, that is kind of working on down and uh, it gets pretty big. It works right into the Midwest by this weekend, works down into the Northeast by early next week, into the Mid-Atlantic by uh, again the early to you know early middle part of next week, if uh, that's an okay terminology to use. After that though, check it out another shot of cold air on the European model and it just keeps coming and coming and coming for the eastern U.S. all the way through almost the entire first week of September. So this could be something that lasts a while. You can see it here well. This is our 850 millibar temperature anomaly. See how I said it right today? Yeah, that's impressive, right? Um, but uh, these are just temperatures uh, departure from normal. Blue being below average, orange being above average for this time of year. Uh, a little bit of ways above the surface. Now, this won't perfectly translate to the surface, but it does a good Good job of showing where frontal systems are, uh, where these colors are clashing and where you can see that advection happening. Here we go. This is by Sunday into Monday. Notice this blue air mass, that uh, cooler air working on in and just oozing down into the east. And then you get a reinforcing shot. This by about a week from now. And it just hangs on, folks. I mean, this fall like air looks to stay around for quite some time. Now, because of that, and because we have fronts attached to this, we will see some rain. In fact, that's kind of what's happening right now. What's bringing some of the rain this afternoon up into the Midwest. Here's your storm system. Here's your front. And guess what? That's where the rain's happening. Uh, that'll continue to work south and east over the coming days. We'll see some scattered showers and storms through the eastern U.S. Uh, by the time we get to Saturday. And then here's your Sunday afternoon. Uh, the Appalachia chain eastbound seeing some of that rain. 
but behind it, dry air starts to funnel on in. And I think here we go by this is next Wednesday. We've got high pressure dominating the pattern for many of us, uh, keeping things drier. Now, down south towards the Gulf Coast, yeah, still afternoon storms into the north with that secondary front of uh, cooler air that some of the models are showing. That as well could lead to some rain chances rising. Now, let's show it to you this way. Uh, these are the European Ensemble members. This shows uh, rainfall estimated here or a mean from all of these members over a day or so. And it just kind of, you know, does a good job of showing generally how much rain, but also when and where it could happen. So uh, by the weekend, you can see we've got some rain working on through. I showed you there in the east. You have higher in rain chances. This would be for your Saturday and Sunday. And then by early next week, we get some higher in rain chances into Oklahoma, the Red River Valley. And, uh, you know, that kind of hangs out into the plains, but we stay pretty dry. This is like all of next week. Notice how the east, the Midwest, staying pretty dry. Another shot of potential precipitation there by about a week from now. But that would just mean another shot of drier air working on in behind that one as well. And then rain chances finally start to rise again, it looks like, uh, right around 10 or so days from now. So we'll see how that pans out. Um, final couple things I'll show you here is this front in terms of the dew point map. Remember, this is your muggy meter and look at all of these more deserty dry colors filtering in. This is by next Tuesday afternoon on the European. This is as good as it get, uh, gets, folks. If you're in anything under 60, it's going to feel good. If you're under 50, I mean, it might even feel dry. You might have to get this chapstick ready. Uh, and we could definitely see some of that up into the Midwest. Dew points even down into the 30s. Uh, this is an exceptionally nice air mass for this time of year. And like I said, some of the models just keep on giving uh, this really nice shot of dry air into the U.S. Now, other question you probably have is, well, what about temperatures? This is just a general idea. Now, this is next Wednesday, so this is kind of in the middle of this nicer pattern. High temperatures only into the 70s for most of us north of the Ohio Valley. Highs only up into the 50s and 60s for the high terrain of the Northeast. Uh, highs down into the low 80s, into the, the deep south even. So uh, that's very good stuff. And by morning time, this is next Thursday morning, check out these low temperatures. We've got 40s into the interior Northeast, 50s into the Southern Apps, uh, even some low 60s flirting with upper 50s in places like Charlotte, Raleigh, Atlanta, uh, even uh, Greenville, Spartanburg, Nashville, some of these other southern cities. Uh, yeah, this is going to be almost a little chilly in the morning. Now, might not quite be sweater weather uh, for some of us, but uh, it's going to be the closest we've been easily so far this year, or at least since earlier this year, whenever we were in the winter and spring months. Alrighty, folks, that's all I got for you. So we've got the tropics we're tracking, although I think starting to die down a little bit. We've got um, the uh, big old fall air mass pattern change that we've been talking about. We'll keep on talking about it. Other than that, that's all I got for you. Y'all have a great one. Stay safe, and I'll see you all tomorrow.